That's for five minutes. Um, Mr. Chairman, the, uh, uh, I think the premise here is, is, uh, is trusting the CMS uh, uh, on what they've done or, or how they would make the projections. But we also have to, have to put things in context back with the, uh, the ACA. Uh, that I've, I've uh, I pulled up an article that was uh, put up by National Rural Health Association um, representing the rural hospitals across America. Uh, and, and one of the, they made several statements here that I thought were worth uh, consideration given the situation we're dealing with. Uh, and it says that some of the regulations were implemented are actually, har uh, actually harming rural America and not fulfilling the ultimate goals of the ACA. And then it goes on to say that despite the well intentions of the ACA have really fallen short and may actually be exacerbating the hospital closure crisis. Um, so having said that with, with their articles, uh, um, we, uh, I think we all understand the role the hospitals play in a community. For those of us in, in uh, rural, rural America, uh, I get a kick out of when I hear the speaker talk about Janesville like it's just a, uh, a little tiny town. It's, Janesville is twice the size of any community I have in my district. Uh, it's 60-some 60, 60 thousand people. So we understand the role of hospitals. But we also have to understand the role, how CMS has made the predictions that how this was going to help out uh, years ago when the ACA was put in place. So I'm, I'm having some suspicion, some doubts about that. I think something can be worked out. But we have to, uh, uh, have to understand first, these, with the ACA as an example, I know of a 250 bed hospital in my district, uh, 250 bed hospital that the ACA has failed so miserably that they now still have an $8 million uncompensated care. And because of the changes in the dish payments back under Obamacare, they, they, they have to write off $8 million in, in uncompensated care, and all they get in, in exchange is $350,000 in dish payments. That doesn't seem like a very, that just shows why we are, our rural hospitals are in trouble. So we're, and, and, and I can go on statistically with it, that we know that rural hospitals all across, primarily because of the ACA, uh, are closing in the last seven years, have been closing at a rate of one a month. And at the rate they're going, we're gonna have 10% of our hospitals close, or 25% of our rural hospitals are gonna close within 10 years. So we have an option. We have this option of this, this new way because whatever has been done under the ACA, it did not work. And it exacerbated the problem. More and more hospitals are closing, so we've got to have an option. And so we have is this. Uh, this one, uh, the, the bill that we have is one is primarily based around free market principles. We think that people, if they can use it, if we can double their HSA uh, ability, that you're gonna be able to have more funds available for that. Uh, the refundable tax credit, credits are gonna be available for people. The high risk pools, all of this is gonna come into place where I think, what I've talked to with the rural hospitals, they're excited about an option because they see the ACA has failed. And so, Mr. Speaker, or Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, I would uh, hope that we will defeat this amendment and, uh, and move on. I yield back. Gentlemen.